So we are looking at magnetic field um, inside a toroid. And let me actually draw a top view. I think that's actually easier to illustrate what kind of path we are going to be dealing with. So let me draw the toroid in a top view. So it looks like, um, well, it'll look like concentric circles. The inner circle and the outer circle, right? So this is what I want you to imagine, top view of a toroid. And uh, let me just uh, specify some things here. The current that I've been drawing in green. Um, so if I look at some segment here, let's say current here would be coming out of the board as in the wires you know, going from the lower bottom to the top and then uh, go left to here, go into the board. And on the other side, it's going to go to the right to complete the loop. And then it'll you know, come out here, go out here, go in here, and so on. And you know, it'll just continue on like this all the way around the toroid. Good? Yes, any questions? OK. So this is the question that we could ask. Somebody could ask this question. Um, what is the magnetic field inside the toroid? Um, at a point here. Let me give a couple things to characterize this point. Um, it would be point at some distance r from the uh, center of the toroid. And if I illustrate the point here, it would be, so you know, in this cross section, it can actually be any point here. Um, so it could be like point here as long as it's at distance r from the center. So this is the point P where I want to figure out, well, what is the magnetic field at point P? Good? OK. Um, so how would you pick your Amperian, uh, um, how would you pick your Amperian loop so that you can exploit the symmetry to calculate the magnetic field easily? What's the direction of magnetic field? I guess I forgot to draw it. In this top view, how does your magnetic field look like? It goes in, uh, yeah, yeah, let's do that carefully. So, yeah, so here it's going downward, right? And it sort of loops around as it does. So it's a, a counterclockwise circular field. That's what you ought to see. Good. I drew just the one to illustrate the direction, but you have to imagine this at many different radii. So what kind of Amperian path would you pick, what Amperian loop would you pick to you, um, exploit your knowledge of the magnetic field direction? I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm not seeing how the right hand rule. Yeah, so you have to imagine this loop as a three-dimensional object. Three-dimensional object. So current is going, coming out of the board here, going into the board here. Right? That's what this dot represents coming out of the board, into the board. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to, this is the shortcut right hand rule I'm using. I'm going to curl my finger in the direction of the loop. Out of the board, into the board. Then the thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field inside that loop. So downward. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and when you connect to them, you get counterclockwise as seen from the top view. Yeah, so one, this is one of the challenging things about magnetism. You have to think three-dimensionally. And in so many of our physics classes, we kind of try to reduce it down to two dimensions. Magnetism is one uh, place where you can do that. Uh, the, all the cross products you see is an indication that magnetism has to be dealt with in three-dimensional space. Uh, okay, so but my question still remains. Uh, what kind of Amperian loop should I pick? It's obvious, right? It's not some exotic shape. Not sphere. Once again, I'm looking for a one-dimensional object, a loop, a line that just uh, you know loops back on itself. Yeah, circle or the edge of a circle. 
because when you say circle, it's unclear. Do you mean the two-dimensional object that is the circular area, or do you mean the one-dimensional object that's the boundary of the circle? So um, yeah, that, I mean, that's what it would be. Now, what I would have to be careful is to make sure that the circle includes that point. Otherwise, the line integral doesn't tell me anything about magnetic field at this point. All right, um, I feel like I've underspecified this toroid. Yeah, I actually have to tell, I mean, so you know, it's assumed that this uh, toroid carries some amount of current I, uh, and this is what I underspecified. Um, I kind of have to tell you how many wires there are. So I have to tell you, um, so this is a finite object. It's not going to have an infinite number of loops. It's going to you know, go finite number of time around. There'll be finite number of loops it's going around. So I have to tell you how many times it goes around. So let me just say it goes around for n loops. So I have to give you this number before you can actually finish the calculation. Because you can imagine a toroid with a single loop would have a smaller magnetic field than a toroid with 100 loops. All right, so uh, we picked the Amperian path. I, I think we are ready to just to get started with our usual calculation. As in, we are going to start off by pretending that we are going to do some kind of um, integral. So we write down Ampere's law. The integral of B dot DL is equal to mu naught I enclosed. All right. Um, and uh, we are going to start simplifying in a way that we never actually end up doing the integral that we are promising to. Um, how does the left-hand side simplify? Uh, yeah, yeah, you are one step ahead. I have to do one more step before that. I have to take care of vectors. I have this uh, whole vector thing and I, I cannot take out the vector magnetic field outside because um, like, that's not allowed. So uh, I have to take care of this uh, vector quantities and the vector uh, dot product. So yeah, you have to make that argument. You have to make that argument that every single point around the loop, the direction of the uh, direction of the loop, DL, and the direction of magnetic field are parallel. So you have to, I mean, you know, it's a simple argument. Mathematically, it doesn't look like you are doing much. But if you skip this step, you have made an error in the proof, and the everything else you are saying is wrong. And if you don't skip this step, then you have a chance of being right for the remainder of the proof. So you have to say, OK, they are parallel. So this dot product will simply end up being BDL for the entire loop. So once you have this, then now you can use something that you know about the magnitude of the magnetic field. That from the rotational symmetry, you can say the magnetic um, field magnitude here and here are the same. So it's the same all the way around the loop. So you can pull this out of the integral. You can say, oh, B doesn't have to live inside the integral. It can be out here. Once you have that, then this um, is a very simple integral. It's once again just the circumference of the um, circle that you pick. So this will simply be 2 pi r. Um, hmm, this is beginning to look a lot like the uh, line. Uh, I hope something's different. Um, OK, uh, how do we express the amount of current being enclosed by this loop? Uh, so amount of current that's being enclosed by this loop. So this is the loop. And by enclosing, really the question we are asking is how much I is going through this surface? How, many, how much current do you think is, how many units of current I do you think is going through this surface? Just one, one I? or more than that? Yeah, I times N. This is how it looks. I have the surface. The current pokes out through here, goes around here. And when it goes here, it's not poking through the surface. Goes around, pokes out again. So now it's done it twice. 
and then now it does it, it's done it three times, keeps doing it until it does end loops. So the amount of current that's being enclosed on this, uh, in this loop, it's not just i, it's i times n, because it goes, does that n times. So amount of current that's enclosed is n times i, um, left hand side is equal to right hand side still, so I can simply solve for magnetic field B. So magnetic field B due to a toroid is equal to mu naught ni, mu naught ni over 2 pi r. Very simple, nothing complicated. <laughs> um, now if you imagine doing this calculation using Bio savarts law, uh, as I said, I can't even imagine how you would set it up. It's just a way too complicated. Uh, but using Ampere's law, um, it's actually pretty simple. 